Patricia gives you the option to create and send emails from within your case. You can create emails in one of two ways. The first option is to create the email from the case parties page. Open the case in question and then click on the parties page. Now select the party entry that is to receive the email. Notice that in the information area we can see email addresses linked to this entity. We can click on this email address directly to open the send email window. The second way to create emails is to generate it from the view print document window. Click on the view print document button. Now select the email template you wish to generate. Before we click OK, take a look at the email properties area. These options indicate if this template will be sent as an email and how it will look when sent. To define any document as an email, we need to use the send as email tick box here. We can also define whether the template content will serve as the body for the email or if it will be an attachment. Notice that these settings were active when I selected my template. Let's take a look at the other document we see here. Notice how when I select this document, the email properties are not set. I will now reselect my email template and again, these properties are set. So how does Patricia know which documents are emails and which are not? This all depends on setup and certain steps are required for the email functionality to work. There are a few requirements. The first is to make changes in the document template creation area. We haven't yet discussed the creation of templates within Patricia, but know that each template we are able to generate are created in a specific area. We can access this area by clicking on Actions, then Document, and then Document Creation. This is where we create our document templates. On the left, I can see a list of all case types in our system. If I click on the plus icon next to a case type, I access all templates associated with that case type. My email template code is TM013. So let's find that in the list. When I click on my template, take note of the fields to the right. Each document template has a set of properties linked to it. Here we set various aspects as to how this document should behave. We'll delve into these in later modules, but for now focus on the correspondence name type. This setting here defines that the template, when emailed, is to be addressed to the account address saved to the case. So when I generate TM013 against my case, it will be addressed to Silvernode Studios the email address you see here. This is a good first step. Now when we generate our email, Patricia will know that the account address is the recipient. The next step is to expressly state that the recipient wants to receive emails and not hardcover letters. Put differently, each name entity in Patricia has a preferred correspondence type and we need to set this accordingly. We can see the preferred correspondence type on the parties page information area. In my example, the account address is set to receive emails, but my foreign agent is not. If I wanted to change this, I need to go into the names area and change it under address details. So Patricia now knows that our template has a specific recipient and this recipient's communication preference is email. If both these conditions are set to true, then the email properties will be filled in. I can of course set this manually. I can tick and untick send via email as needed. But it's important for you to understand how Patricia determines where and if emails are to be sent. So I will now generate my email. I will click on OK. A preview of the email will now appear on screen. At this point you can still make any changes to the body as needed. Once you are ready to send the email, click on the print send email button. Remember, depending on the client's preferred correspondence type, Patricia will either print the document 
or open the send email window. The send email screen has several options for us to work with. First, we can of course click the send button to send our email. We next have the option to save a draft of our email using the save draft button. This will save a draft copy to your case documents page. You can then simply open the draft from there to continue working in it whenever you want. Below this we have the from field. And here you choose from which email address our document will be sent. You can have up to four entries as a choice in the from address field. These are as follows. Person, team, department, and a basic configuration value in the maintenance application. I will leave this on the generic team email address. We then have our recipient entries, to, cc, and bc. Take note that some of these fields are already filled in. Why is this? Well, Patricia is smart enough to look at the case and based on the template settings, pull in the correct email address. Here we can see my to email address matches my account address email. You can of course add more email addresses by typing it in manually, or you can click on the actual recipient label. Let's add a copy address, so I will click on the CC button. Here I will get a list of all email addresses registered on my case. And I can add these by highlighting it and clicking here. I can also pull in addresses from my Outlook contact list by ticking this tick box. I add my email subject in this field, and this can have a default preset value when generated. Next we have the Attach button, which allows attachments to your email. Click on the Attach button to add your attachment. This will bring up a question asking where the attachment will be taken from. You need to choose where to grab the attachments, either from the Documents tab or from your local drive. Let's add a document from my case, so I will click Yes. I will then see a list of all documents saved to my case, which I can then choose to add. I will add the PDF file. Let's add another attachment, but this document is saved to my local drive and not my case. I will click on Attach again, but this time I will click on No. Navigate to where your document is stored and then add it. We have additional options to change our attachments. Click on show attachment to see the list. Yeah, I can change the name of my attachment or mark it to be sent as PDF. I can also delete an attachment if need be by clicking on the delete attachment button. We have the body of the email shown next and of course you can still edit this if need be. Then we have the request receipt tick box, which does exactly as the name implies. It will request a receipt from the recipient when the email is delivered. The last area is the print, send and cancel button. Finally, to send your email, click the send button. 